today we shall be taking up FIR filters. As we discussed last time, uh, let me first of all revise in short what we did last time. H z for linear phase characteristics, we had a symmetry of distribution of the coefficients. Say last one is a 0 z to the power minus n plus 1 that is an n point sequence. We, we studied different situations if there is a symmetry and if n is even or odd what will be the expressions and then if it was an anti symmetric sequence that is if this is a 0 this is minus a 0 just opposite signs from the other end if we find with equal magnitudes of the coefficients, then that is an anti-symmetric sequence. We also derived the conditions for that. Now, <coughs> there are certain peculiar properties of this. Let us study them in brief, then we will go over to the design of FI filter. H z is equal to 0 gives me the zeros of the polynomial. All right. You see if h 1 by z is also 0 at those points or in other words 1 by z i is also a solution. That means, if z i is a root then 1 by z i is also another root except at 1 or minus 1 because inverse of 1 is 1 inverse of minus 1 is also 1 minus 1. If it is having a root at point 2, then it will have a root at 1 by point 2 that is 5 also. So, z z i's rather except at plus 1 and minus 1 will have pairs of roots z i will appear in pairs if real. Okay. Suppose the roots are complex, then let us see this is just a unit circle, there is a complex root r theta, then r minus theta is also a root. Okay. Since this is a root 1 by r theta is also another root. So, 1 by r theta, theta will become minus theta. So, is a root here and 1 by r minus theta will be here. So, basically there will be two pairs or a quad for complex roots. Okay. For complex roots, there will be four such roots coming in a group. For real roots, they will be in pairs. Okay. So, the distribution of roots will be like this, depending on the size of the polynomial. There can be say one root on the real axis, then there can be a few pairs on the real axis other than 1 and there can be groups of force like this. I should have put zeros to indicate them as zeros instead of showing them just as star as roots. They are all zeros of the function. So, it will be better to use zeros that is a standard symbol. Okay. <coughs> so, zeros distribution will be like this. Now, you can try out what are the different possible locations of roots 
what are the possible locations of roots for H z symmetric all those four cases and n even or odd then anti symmetric again n even and odd. So, there are four cases for which you try out what are the possible distribution. Now, for an anti symmetric case there is a clear cut case. Let us take an example of say n is equal to say 3 n is equal to 3 means it will be a 4 point sequence. So, and we are considering anti symmetric anti symmetric sequences. So, H z will be a 0 plus a 1 z inverse then minus a 1 so 3 4 uh, 1 2 3 4 z to the power minus 2 minus a 0 z to the power minus 3. Correct me if I am wrong this is all right. So, I can take a 0 into 1 minus z to the power minus 3 is that all right plus a 1 okay, a 1 z inverse I can take a 1 z inverse into 1 minus z to the power minus 1 is that all right. So, 1 minus z to the power minus 1 is a common factor other factors will be depending on the magnitudes of a 1 and a 0, but 1 minus z 1 is a common factor. So, z is equal to 1 is a root all right that means there will be a root here at 1 it, this is the z plane. Let us take n is equal to 4 this is irrespective of the coefficients a 0 a 1 if I have h z is equal to 4 uh, n is equal to 4 then h z will be a 0 plus a 1 z inverse then there will not be anything then minus a 1 z 3 and a 0 z 4. Okay. <coughs> so, the number of terms though they are 4 but actually it is a 5 point sequence because it runs up to z to the power minus 4 there is a 0 coefficient in between. Okay. So, here it will be a 0 into 1 minus z to the power minus 4 plus a 1 z inverse into 1 minus z to the power minus 2. Okay. So, once again 1 minus z to the power minus 1 is a common factor there can be other factors <coughs> in this case it is 1 minus z to the minus 2 all right. So, for n is equal to 4 for n is equal to 4 it will be 1 minus z inverse into something in this particular case it will be also 1 minus z 1 plus z inverse. So, there will be a root here there will be also a root here a 0 here. Okay. So, whether it is n is equal to 3 or 4 you can go to n is equal to 5 6 you will find this root is common is that all right. What about h equal to 1 for n is equal to even what is the value of h equal to 1 h equal to minus 1 if I put yes please h equal to minus 1 it will be always a 0 minus Okay, a 0 minus a 1 uh, 
uh, for n even h minus 1 will be always 0. Can you see that h minus 1 will become equal to h plus 1. Let us see. Okay, all right. No, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Sorry, I withdraw. Say H Z is equal to zero. What is H Z? At Z is equal to minus one. What is H Z? At Z is equal to minus one. Middle term is missing, so it will be a zero plus a one into minus one minus a 1 into minus 1 a 0 into plus 1 and what is h 1 by z at z is equal to minus 1. We compute that h of z at z equal to minus 1. Okay. So, that means h minus 1 is equal to uh, it is with a negative sign hmm? Sir, you know, for n is equal to odd I am sorry for n is equal to odd I am sorry for n is equal to odd h z no, but we are not getting that uh, well uh, I think we will have to check n at 1 plus z ok. n is equal to odd for n is equal to odd <coughs> we had something like this a 0 plus a 1 z inverse minus a 1 z to the power minus 2 minus a 0 z to the power minus 3 is that all right. Okay. Now, how much is the value of this function this is h z and what is h of 1 by z a 0 plus a 1 z minus a 1 z squared minus a 0 z cubed. If I take z cubed outside minus z cubed into this will become a 0 plus a 1 z inverse minus a 1 z 2 z to the power minus 2 that is h z is that all right. So, it is minus z cubed into h z I evaluate this at minus 1 it will be minus 1 this will be just minus 1. So, h z at z is equal to minus 1 is how much a 0 plus a 1 if I put z is equal to minus 1 a 0 plus a 1 minus a 1 this one a 0 plus a 1 minus a 1 minus a 0 how much is it 0. Okay. So, for this 1 minus z inverse was a factor I did not evaluate this, but I find at minus 1 also it is vanishing. So, there will be a 0 here also no just now we have seen for n is equal to odd n is equal to odd uh, is it not if I put z is equal to minus 1 this is vanishing these terms will get cancelled uh, sorry uh, n is equal to n is equal to even this is what I uh, for n is equal to even it will be cancelling for n is equal to odd it will not be sorry does it cancel no, may not. Okay. So, like this you keep on taking different 
polynomials and then see the distribution of possible poles and zeros. Now, yesterday we are discussing if you have a 0 or a pole or pole 0 pair very close to the imaginary axis or to the um, 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 sorry very close to the um, first quadrant and fourth quadrant or third quadrant and um, second quadrant there are uh, there are characteristics similar to your band pass, high pass, low pass and so on. So, if you are given a particular type of filter you know approximately what will be the location of say zeros if it is an all zero function and then you can form whether it is an it is going to be a symmetric or anti symmetric sequence. Now, let us come to <coughs> FIR filter design what we discussed last time is we just give an introduction to Fourier series approach. If you are given a function say like this, this is the given characteristic that is the desired one some omega c 2, this may be omega c 1 and this is pi and similarly these two minus omega c 1 minus omega c 2. Then you are asked to design a filter of say n is equal to 21, okay, total length 21. So, as I was mentioning for any function, this is a periodic function, is it not? This is a periodic function with a period of 2 pi. So, I can always get the Fourier coefficients h n okay, as 1 by 2 pi minus pi to plus pi h a to the power j omega a to the power j omega n d omega. Okay. Now, this sequence this sequence that will be coming here say may be like this over a profile like this if you take a discrete version of this okay it is a sink function in case it is a rectangular function h omega is a rectangular function then it will be a sink function it will be slightly different if you have a roll off like this all right so it will be like this. When you are given n is equal to 21, <coughs> so I will have 21 coefficients chosen from here, 10 on this side, 10 on this side, 1 at the center, so that will become 21. If it is a 20 point sequence, there is a slight dif difficulty. Normally, we take an odd point sequence, I will tell you why. Anyway, you can take an even point sequence, but then this sequence you'll have to choose will have to be chosen dropping this Achha. now if i give a shift of 10 steps what happens if i give a shift to any sequence hn this hn that i have got is non causal it extends on the left hand side also now if i give a shift of 10 steps then i'll get a causal sequence and the sequence looks like this, it may be points coming out of this. This goes to the 11th position, all right. So, there are 10 values below this, 10 values above this, okay. So, I get a symmetric sequence like this. So, if I give a shift towards positive side by 10 steps, what is the net contribution of the function phase? It will be suppose I call it h dash 10, then what is h dash 10 is h n minus capital N. So, h dash e to the power j omega will be nothing but original e to the power 
h e to the power j omega e to the power minus j ten omega. So, this is the n omega ok n is 10, but uh, generally it is capital N is that all right. So, that gives me a linear phase that is given here ok. So, if you are given a linear phase characteristics then you know this one has to be some n omega. So, if the slope is given say 15, then you know you can choose a filter of 15 plus 15 plus 1, 31 length of 31. Okay. So, you take the Fourier coefficients and then give a shift. Let us take an example, it will be clear. So, we shall now consider a function where this is pi by 8 minus pi by 8, this is pi minus pi. Okay. So, you compute h n, h n is Suppose you do not give any shift to start with, you just integrate h magnitude e to the power j omega n as if its phase is 0. Whatever coefficients you get, you shift it by so many steps, you get the desired filter. So, 1 by 4 sin n pi by 4 by n pi by 4. Okay. So, put different values of eight, n and compute h, so n is equal to 0, so h 0, n is equal to 0 except that n is equal to 0 other values will be very easily computed. So, this is 0 0.25, n is equal to 0 sin 0 by 0, basically sin theta by theta, theta tending to 0. So, that is the limit 1, h 1 h 2 and so on you compute h 1 will be sin pi by 4 by pi by 4 into 4. So, that gives me 0 0.2250 okay. sin pi by 4 by pi by 4 into 4. So, sin pi by 4 by pi. So, that is about 0 0.225 then this is 0 0.1591 and so on I have got some values listed here is 3.075 check whether these values are uh, all right when you come to 4 n is equal to 4 sin pi that is 0 so occasionally as you have seen earlier some of the values will be touching the zeros so they will be if they are multiples pi by 4 multiplied by, <coughs> by an integer gives me a value like sin pi, 2 pi, 3 pi and so on, it will become 0. So, periodically you will find zeros are appearing h 5 and so on minus 0 0.045 h 6 similarly 0 0.053 h 7 anyway you can compute 10 values h 10 comes to 0 0.0318. Okay. Now, after you have computed this, you give a shift by 10 steps, then what do you get? This will shift to the central point, all right. as we have shown the peak has shifted to 11th position here. So, this will be the last point. So, it will start with 0 0.0318. So, I will call that as h dashed 0 as 0 0.0318, okay, which is nothing but old h 10. h dashed 1 will be 0 0.025, just before this h 9 was 
0.025 and so on. Is it all right? H 10 will be 0.25, H 11 point uh, we started with 0.25, is it 0.225? Uh, 0.225, no 0 0.025, 0 0.025 is the maximum value. So, H 10 will be that, okay. it starts with H 0. So, H 11 will be 0.225, is that all right? H 9 is also 0.225, it is all symmetric. So, this is what you get as a filter. Now, what you have done an infinite sequence has been truncated at 10th step, otherwise it stretches up to infinity plus infinity and minus infinity. You have truncated it at that level say 10, 12 anything you want. What happens to the final response? Does it remain same? It does not. So, the response that will be that you will be getting from these 10 truncated values rather 21 point sequence will not match with the actual value. So, actual desired fun function was like this. Had I had those components which we have dropped, then I would have got this uh, perfect function like this. Since they have been dropped, that means those frequencies are missing. So, the realized filter will have the characteristic like this. So, you will find the high frequency terms present here, all right. The high frequency terms present here because you are dropping them, they are conspicuous by their absence. In this class, there are so many absentees. So, I can make out that Mr. such and such who are sitting here every day is absent. So, by his absence, he is making his presence, I mean he is uh, reminding me of his face. All right. So, it is like this it leaves an impression that this is absent. So, overall function will become like this, you have to reduce this. So, what we are truncating was a very abrupt truncation, suddenly at 10 step you are saying stop, no more beyond this. Instead of that you gradually reduce the importance of higher order terms and then make it 0. All right. So, for this purpose <coughs> sorry to smoothen this <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> to smoothen this, otherwise at sharp changes, these ripples will be very high. So, to reduce this, we use a window function. That means, we have a function, suppose this is a midpoint we give maximum weightage to the midpoint a value of 1 and minimum weightage to the two ends all right somebody may go by a triangular function like this the one that we have chosen earlier is a rectangular function that means we have given equal importance to all of them suddenly we have made a zero value at this. Okay. So, this is known as a rectangular window, the one that we have considered so far, rectangular window. Then there are many window functions, Bartlett, Hamming, Hanning, Kaiser and so on. There are a good number of windows, standard window functions used more or less they give a similar kind of uh, results. 
Now, some of them may be like this. I need not start from 0, I give with a little weightage and then it is like a something like a parabola. So, you will find the distinction is uh, the difference is very, very uh, small between different windows. So, H n if I multiplied by W n okay, will be uh, realized values of n that I shall be using. I am using H r and this is H dashed because that is the sequence that we got after shifting it. So, H dash 10 is multiplied by the corresponding window function, we generate the realized filter functions. Is it all right? Now, how do you realize it in the uh, say, how do you write a software or even a, in a hardware? You have got H 0 plus H 1 Z inverse, let us uh, once again come back to a general filter function like this h n z to the power uh, sorry z to the minus 1 z to the minus n. I can give an input x n all right multiplied by h 0 just a constant then I put a delay circuit, delay element, I can write capital D or Z inverse as I told you both the conventions are used by textbooks and then again multiply by H 1, again put a delay multiplied by H 2 and so on and then from the bottom you keep on adding this is an adder again this is an adder, again this is an adder and this will be the output. This is simple FIR structure. One may be interested in breaking it up into factors. Suppose I put it in the form of quadratics, all right. I factorize in the form of quadratics if it is possible, or maybe a biquad, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, in the uh, form of a polynomial of four coefficients that is consisting of the quads of points after determining the zeros. I can always take polynomials of that order. Then I can have one block H 1 Z may be consisting of four roots, another block consisting of another four Z. So, H 2 and so on put them in cascade. So, there will be four elements here 1, 2, 3, 4, four deal elements here then that will be forming one block again put a similar block. So, this y 1 will go to the go as the input to the next block and so on. So, at the end you get the final output y n one may break it up into smaller blocks like this. There can be different arrangements of this one may start from the other end and see the output here these structures you try yourself what are the other possible structures. Okay. Now, next we take up a DFT approach. So, the Fourier series approach was very straightforward. You take the Fourier function, uh, Fourier coefficients, truncate it at the desired place and then shift it by so many steps. In the DFT approach, we do not consider basically what you are doing is almost identical to Fourier series approach, there you have integrated 
as you evaluate the Fourier coefficients in the normal time function, so over one period of 1 by 2 pi, so I mean uh, period of 2 pi, here you take discrete values of the function once again over a period of 2 pi. So, suppose you are having a filter function given like this, desired function like this, this is minus pi, this is plus pi. So, I can always have a large number of points say n, large number of points at intervals of 2 pi by n. like this. <coughs> so, these intervals will be 2 pi by n. So, there will be many zeros okay, and I am taking the values only at these points, is it not? you are given a particular slope, all right, stretch it on this side, okay. so this slope is known. Then you, if you know the slope, you can associate the angle say k omega and you can evaluate the value of the angle at every point corresponding values. So, what I am giving you is h at 0, it is the dc value, h at 1 which is this magnitude and this much angle, h 2 similarly is this magnitude, magnitude in this case remains constant for a substantial length and then this much angle. So, like that up to this point you can come, after that the magnitude becomes 0. So, even if it has a phase you do not have to bother. Now, if these points are given, <coughs> then you compute the end point DFTs. What will be the DFTs of this? There will be an end point sequence. All right. So, if you are given 21 points, a 21 point sequence, then calculate what will be the angular shift. I have taken those 21 points to match with the desired characteristics, but we do not know what happens in between. It can be anything. All right. So, this will be much more meaningful if you have a very large number of points, if you take a filter of a very high order, then this approach will be very effective, because I will make it pass through very close points, closely located at regular intervals. So, even if there is a deviation, the deviation would not be much, because I am trying to hold it at very regular intervals, all right. it will be perfectly matching at those points. Unlike the Fourier series approach, where we are not knowing, we are suddenly truncating and depending on the type of window, there will be ripples. Here, there will be ripples, but there will be also confirm, confirmation at regular points and those points can be many. So, for a, for a very high order filter, say n is equal to 151 if I take. So, you can calculate the filter sequence. Now, for this we normally go for a very large size of um, large value of n computation of DFT, we resort to FFT algorithm. FFT algorithm in the next class we shall be taking up FFT computation all right. So, today we will be discussing about the other two methods. <coughs> the third one is 
computer aided design. Now, there can be different approaches to computer aided design. Let us see one of them. I have a transition here, you see there is a sharp change here, there is a sharp change here, there is a sharp change here and here. Here it is regular, it is kept at a constant level, here it is changing at a regular level. All right. So, I need not bother about these points so much as much as this one, this is of more concern. So, I take more number of points here, that means I do not take points at regular intervals, all right. Again more number of points here, fewer points here, more number of points here, more number of points here, okay. Say let them be starting from minus pi omega 1, omega 2 and here also I need not take so many points, it remains flat. So, I may take 2, 3 points here, okay. uh, say maybe 10 points here, 10 points there, 1 or 2 points here, a few points here, again 10 points here, 10 points here and so on. So, h <coughs> omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 that I choose that is h omega i should be matched with the desired value, the ideal one. This is a h realized filter. Now, suppose I take this as fixed number of coefficients, we can have fixed number of coefficients say I want 21 coefficient filter. So, a 0 plus a 1 a to the power minus j omega i, okay. similarly up to a 20, 21 point sequence means it will be a 20 a to the power minus j 20 omega i. Omega i is this set of points, maybe 100 points. So, we are determining 21 coefficients in a least square sense, least square error sense. Okay. Obviously, with 20 coefficients, if you want to match exactly at those points, then I need for 100 points, I need 100 coefficients, is it not? Unless I take a up to a 100, all right, a 99, I cannot really match at 100 points. So, what I am trying to resort is, resort to is given a large number of points, it is something like this, I am trying to fit in the best possible straight line or best possible parabola, where the number of coefficients will be 2 or 3, whereas number of points are many, all right. So, I am trying to fit in a particular order filter. All right. This is of 21 coefficients and the number of points taken are maybe 100 or 200. Okay. So, how do you go about it? What would, be, what would be these parameter values? So, here we will take up, we will digress a little from here, we will take up what is known as a recursive okay, uh, uh, least square algorithm. Sorry. Mind you, here you will be given because it is a 21 point sequence, basically the slope is 10 omega. I want also linear phase characteristics. These coefficients, though they are appearing to be 20, 21, but basically there are 11 coefficients because this a 0 has to be a 0 here. Okay. So, there are basically 11 coefficients. So, you might as well put a 0 here and a 0 here a 1 and a 1 here and so on. Now, for each 
point given h omega 1 is a complex number. That means, at this frequency say omega uh, omega 51, this is the magnitude and this is the angle 52, this is the magnitude, this is the angle and I have taken large number of points here. So, correspondingly you have to calculate also the angle and then only, so this is a basically a complex equation all right, with real coefficients. Suppose you have, let us take a very simple example, you have, uh, this is a very common example that I give uh, for a discussion on this. Suppose in this room, you have got three heaters all right, at three different locations, three corners of this room and you want to measure the temperature of those three heaters. Let them be x 1, x 2 and x 3. Okay. And the temperature at any point is a linear combination of those three temperatures x 1, x 2, x 3. Okay. So, at different locations you keep on making measurements of temperature. So, at this point it will be some constant into x 1, some other constant into x 2, some third constant into x 3 and that will be the noted measured temperature as something say T 1. I will call it A 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus a 1 3 x 3 is equal to some measurement b 1 all right. Assuming that the temperature here we can apply subvision theorem x 1 x 2 x 3 and the dependence is linear it may be inversely proportional to the distance. So, a 1 1 is known a 1 2 is known depending on the distance I know this value at different locations I make keep on making the measurements. So, a 2 1 x 1 plus a 2 2 x 2 plus a 2 3 x 3 is equal to b 2. <coughs> if my measurement is perfect, if my measurement is perfect, then probably I will require only 3 any 3 equations to solve x 1 x 2 x 3. If there is a very noisy environment, if the measurement is not perfect, there can be error due to my observation, there can be error in the thermometer, there can be some wind blowing here and there. So, there can be various sources of errors. So, if we assume the error to be say Gaussian, white Gaussian noise, it is a very noisy and random noise, then B 1, B 2, B 3 these are all noisy measurements corrupted. I make say 100 such measurements a 101 x 1 plus a 102 x 2 and so on a 103 x 3 is equal to b 100. I have made 100 such measurements all right. What will be the best possible estimate of the temperatures x 1 x 2 x 3 ok. So, we write this as matrix A vector x is equal to vector B. This is the measurement vector, x is the uh, vector of the unknowns and A is a matrix which is 3 uh, 100 by 3. So, A is 100 by 3, where 100 is the number of measurements and 3 is the number of unknowns. All right. So, our aim is to minimize the function j, the performance index, where j is equal to what is the noise? Say it is like this, you are trying to fit in in a cluster of observations a best possible straight line. Okay. I may choose this as the probably this is the best possible straight line, there are many more measurements here and there. Okay. Suppose this is the best possible straight line, how do you uh, fit in that? I keep on changing the inclinations and then measure these errors all right. So, if this is x 1, this is the observed value, I assume some equation y is equal to m x plus c, I have to determine m and c. Okay. So, y observed is this one 
okay, y at the ith point minus m x observed minus c minus c squared will be this error summation of this over i will be these error squared okay sorry and so on and this you try to minimize so similarly <coughs> here it will be ax minus b this error now if this is an error vector if error comes in the form of a vector all right say e1 e2 e3 then what is the sum of these squares it will be e1 square e2 square e3 square which will be e transpose e so if this is the error this transpose ax minus b will be the error error squared and this is to be minimized what i am trying to minimize is e1 square plus e2 square plus e3 square and so on so that gives me x transpose a transpose a x minus x transpose a transpose b minus b transpose a x plus b transpose b. Okay. Now, this is to be minimized with respect to the parameters. Here, basically parameters are the variable x, x 1, x 2, x 3. Here, the parameters were m and c, but they are the ones which are variable and these are the informations which are known y i and x i. So, parameters take the role of a variable. Okay. Now, here this is a quadratic, this and this they are same, it is like alpha is a vector, beta is a vector. All right. So, alpha transpose beta is alpha 1 beta 1 plus alpha 2 beta 2 plus alpha 3 beta, beta 3 is same as beta transpose alpha. All right. So, x transpose a transpose basically this is a x transpose into b is same as b transpose a x. So, I can write this as 2 times any of these and this is a constant. So, derivative of this with respect to x will be 0. So, I equate this to null vector which means this will give me a transpose a is a square positive definite matrix. It is a square matrix. What will be the order of this a transpose a? See a was 100 by 3. So, this will be 3 by 100 into 100 by 3. So, it will be 3 by 3. Number of unknowns if it is n then it will be n by n matrix. So, it is a very compact matrix. So, that will give me a transpose a x minus a transpose b is equal to 0 or a transpose a sorry whole inverse a transpose b will be the solution that the best possible solution that we are searching for we will call it optimum solution all right best estimate now what is our question in the filter design okay we have got now let us look back we have got hundreds of such points all right the informations are given the measurements have been made like b1 b2 b3 b4 so these are the b's all right complex now. The measurement vector is complex and you have to look you have to find out instead of 3 parameters say a 3 variables x 1, x 2, x 3. Now, we have got up to 20 that is 21 variables to be calculated. So, you can get the best possible estimates actually 11 
actually 11. So, <coughs> from here you will be getting the set of a 0, a 1, a 2 up to a 11, this will be taking the role of x vector x. So, estimate of these we are making will be equal to capital A transpose A, capital A was yes, could you suggest what would be capital A? What would be capital A? No, A 1, A 0, these are what is capital A? 1, then e to the power minus j omega 1, all right. Omega 1 may be 0, it may be or minus pi, whatever it is, I may start from this end, then e to the power minus j 2 omega 1 and so on, then 1 e to the power minus j omega 2 and so on, all right. Basically, it is very similar to Fourier matrix, all right. Unlike the Fourier matrix, here you are having randomly selected omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, all right. They are not equispaced. In the normal DFT, we are taking 2 pi by n as regular intervals. Here, I need not stick to that. This is also a Fourier matrix of a different kind. It gives you the Fourier transform, but not the discrete Fourier transform with regular intervals. So, this multiplied by what will be this? H observations H at omega 1, H at omega 2 and so on, H at j omega 21 or 20 whatever you have taken. not 21, sorry 100, if you have made 100 observations 100, mm, mm, mm -hmm. is that all right? X will be, now that should be, this one, oh, this one will be A 10, okay. and this one? x hat is equal to, no actually it is not complete, sorry, it is not complete. This is A matrix, then you have to take transpose of that, then take the inverse of that, then again multiplied by A transpose, then multiply by this. There are something in between. I have written only the A matrix, basically you have to write this. It is the B column is this in between the other two A's are coming. Okay. So, we will stop here for today. In the next class, we will be discussing in a little detail about the FFT algorithm. Thank you very much.